So I've been thinking about how to make a board game, and I wanted to create a board game that had an interesting set of tiles that you could build the board out of, because I really like games that do that. So there's this game called Mystery Mansion that I played way back when, when I was very young, that I really loved, that used this mechanic of placing rooms in order to build a mansion that you're searching in. I actually used that concept in a text adventure game that I made in college called Sir Reginald's Pirate Hooker. I'm not sure if the code for that still exists. Another game that I like that uses that mechanic is Carcassonne, which you would know if you had watched the episode of Beer and Board Games that my wife Mary sponsored for me. So I, th I think it's really fun because it gives you a chance to influence the course of the game in some way other than just having stuff and moving around because you get to build a little world and I've always liked building games. But I wanted to create a new way of doing it. These games all use square grids. In general, filling up a two-dimensional plane with shapes is called tessellation. And there's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, one really interesting way that I came across was Penrose tiling. And particularly, I liked P2, which is the kite and dart tiling. There's lots of really interesting math involved in kites and darts. They're based on the geometry of the pentagon and the golden triangle. So a golden triangle is an isosceles triangle where the ratio of the sides is equal to the golden ratio. So uh, in the golden triangle, it has two long sides and those are 1.6, etc. times the length of the one short side. And there's also a golden gnomon, which is the opposite, where there's one long side, uh, and again, the ratio of the sides is equal to uh, the golden ratio. And the interesting thing also about that triangle is that the ratio of the angles is just three to one. The golden ratio kind of gets a bad rap because people mainly know it as an ancient Greek secret for making things look nice. It's actually a lot more useful than that, especially when you're dealing with geometries involving five sides or five angles. And golden triangles have some really interesting properties. For instance, a golden triangle or a golden gnomon can each be bisected into a smaller golden triangle and a golden gnomon again. So you can make kind of recursive shapes with it. Um, and also, if you make a pentagram, the triangles that are the points of the pentagram are each golden triangles. So the angle at the top of a golden triangle is 36 degrees. The dart has two 36 degree angles and it's in fact made of two golden gnomons and the kite is made out of two golden triangles turned on their sides. So I did some math and I worked out uh, on this piece of paper all the distances between the different points on the kites and darts and I worked out the coordinates of those points so that I could make a model. I'm making a model for a couple of reasons. One is I'd like to be able to at some point uh, cut out these shapes so I can make them into a physical board game and the other thing I wanted to do was to import them into Tabletop Simulator so that I could play test online without having people necessarily physically come here. So I decided I wanted to try uh, JavaScript to do some of the math. I didn't want to necessarily calculate all the math out into decimals since there's some nice uh, square roots and things like that. Uh, Square root of 5 shows up a whole lot, just like in the golden ratio, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, all over the place in these coordinates. So I just kind of wanted to write those down in JavaScript and then build up the model using 3GS, which is a fairly simple 3D geometry library for JavaScript. And then I could create some textures to go on top of the tiles and then map them onto the textures, and then I could create uh, exportable files that I could just download and then I could uh, import them into Tabletop Simulator. So here I've just included 3JS and here in my code I've just copied and pasted in the OBJ file exporter for 3JS and that does nothing but print out this file here uh, based on my model. And I actually used uh, Canvas to make my texture, and I didn't get too far yet. It doesn't quite look like what I wanted it to, 
the white circle here is supposed to represent a star. So I wanted to make a game about space travel and space exploration because I like the tile system as a way to facilitate an exploration mechanic. So a lot of representations of uh, darts and kites use this sort of uh, curve in order to make sure that you're following the rules of matching when you put them together. So the lines should line up here uh, along these curves to let you know that you've done it correctly and you'll notice they kind of form arcs around these uh, points that are at the vertices. So I thought of those vertices as representing maybe the locations of stars. So the lines would represent maybe natural sort of orbits that you would have and you could use them as uh, sort of the least energy paths are through this galaxy. So I got all that together and I got my files and I actually made a couple links here so I can uh, download the textures that I drew. Let's go ahead and fire up Tabletop Simulator. So Tabletop Simulator is kind of exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's just a thing that you can use to play games. Load game. There we go. There we go. So here I've got my uh, my pieces imported so you can see how they they kind of fit together and the idea is to kind of build stars. Uh, there's a couple limitations to Tabletop Simulator that kind of made this not work as well as I wanted to. Uh, one thing is when you pick up a piece you can rotate it. You can rotate it with like Q and E but each time you press the button, it rotates by this amount, which you can set between 15 and 90 degrees, but only at these particular values. So I can hit 60, and it rotates 60 degrees. Uh, none of those is the right value for these tiles. You probably want to rotate them by 72 degrees or 36 degrees, and you can't really do that. So what I had to do was mess with the settings to the point where uh, I could just kind of slide them in together. So right now they automatically lift themselves over top, which makes it hard. You're just kind of dropping them. Uh, but you can change this setting so that you're not actually lifting them very high, and then you can kind of squish them together like so. If you try squishing the dart together with other pieces, it kind of pops. Uh, I think it's it's really pushing against these other pieces in this little uh, concavity here. Uh, and that makes it really hard to build stuff uh, and get it to all fit together. Uh, it's really kind of fighting. Uh, what you're trying to do. So that doesn't work very well. Um, and even to get it to work uh, this well, I had to make uh, a couple of tweaks to how I imported. So you can kind of import whatever you want in Tabletop Simulator as long as you're able to get OBJ files. Uh, and I think there's a couple other formats. So you hit custom here on chest and then model and you can import uh, your model. And in this case I've used OBJ files. Uh, you can also use... no, just OBJ files. So um, there's one other thing about this. So you need a model for your uh, collider, which is just the shape uh, that's used in the physics modeling. So that's how it bumps into other things. And you notice there's this checkbox for non-convex. So that means it has concavities, it could have holes, or just like we have in our dart, it may just have an angle that's inward. So this checkbox only works for things that don't move. So you can have inward angles, like you can have a frame, or you could have a board with holes in it, and that's fine as long as it doesn't move, you just check this and you're good. If you need to move something around like a tile, this doesn't do anything. You need a collider that has multiple meshes in it. So uh, I'll get into that real quick. So first we'll import, uh, if we import our 
let's do our kite uh, and we can save it locally or to the cloud and then image um, boop -doo -doo, image so I saved that image earlier based on my output from JavaScript uh, don't really need normal and then normal uh, just means uh, like height or bumpiness uh, perpendicular to the surface of something. So I've got my kite collider, everything's happy. Uh, I do f choose figurine, which just means try to keep it upright. Uh, that's all fine. And then that imports. So that just gives you one, and then you can put it into an infinite bag, and then you can pull out as many as you want. So where's my, there's my bag of kites over here. Yeah. So I needed to get two meshes. So here's my output. This is the actual OBJ file. And uh, here V is uh, vertex. And you notice there's a lot more than four here. And that's because, so the tile has a, a surface, but it's also got a bottom. And then it also has uh, sides. And those sides have four faces. So in order to get the dart to work as a collider, that has concavity, I had to create two meshes, which means uh, the left half of the dart is one mesh and the right half of the dart is another mesh. So what I did was just create those two by, uh, by giving one half of the dart three vertices and then the other half has three vertices. They're each kind of a triangle. And then I ran it through my, my function, my extrude function that I wrote, um, which most libraries will have that sort of thing anyway I just threw together my own rolled my own from the just the surface uh, it creates a back and the sides so if you've got pieces that you need to move around in tabletop simulator that's kinda what you're gonna have to go through in order to get them to collide correctly uh, that's kinda why I have two darts here on the display this one is actually uh, the regular dart and then this one is the two mesh dart just to make sure they look right. And the other thing I didn't do right here was that um, I kind of assumed that my textures were drawn on squares. It looks like it might roughly occupy a square and in fact in this drawing they look a little bit more square than they actually are because I didn't accurately make the angles I just wanted a, a way to map things out and write in the right places what the angles should be. So they're not square, which means if you draw a circle on it, then that circle gets distorted into kind of an ellipse. It's a little like egg shaped. And there's one other thing that I didn't quite figure out yet, and maybe you can help me. So there's this one configuration that seems to follow the rules of tiling as far as I've been able to gather. So you take, uh, take your tiles, get them out of the way. So if you have two kites like this, which is legal, that definitely happens. And you have a kite here, that definitely happens. So that should be okay, right? And you can do the same thing uh, here. You can put this here. If you do that, then there is no tile that you can place into this gap here. Uh, this this doesn't work anymore. Like you can stick the dart there, and the angle is correct, but it no longer matches up. Uh, and so the th placement of these four tiles doesn't seem to violate the rules, but it's impossible then. Or is it this? There's no. So you can't do it. You could do it with this, but this would violate the rules too. And then you have this little bit over here that you can't fill anyway. You can stick this in there, but it doesn't actually work. Why is it possible to get yourself into the situation so easily and what you could do to avoid it? Uh, I'm not, not sure what I'm doing wrong here or if I'm just wrong in my assumption that this shouldn't happen. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure if the the tiling rules, as far as I understand them, as described by those colored arcs, is enough to prevent you from making invalid choices that will ultimately cause you not to tessellate all of space. I'm probably just missing something about how Penrose tiling works. Anyhow, I'll let you know if I make progress on this and uh, if I end up with a game worth playing. Uh, I'll definitely uh, show it to y'all. So. Thanks for watching.